Hello, I'm David Marks. In this series of videos, I introduce a new general theory of behaviour. It's been said that advances in science come not from empiricism, but from new theories. As a journal editor for 24 years, I've reviewed thousands of empirical papers that refer to theory, and rarely have I seen any new theories, and never any general theory. All sciences are founded on general theories. Biology has the theory of evolution. Physics, the theory of relativity. Chemistry, the theory of molecular quantum mechanics. And geology, the theory of plate tectonics. However, in psychology, theory is a rare commodity and general theory does not exist. So what makes a theory in psychology general? Many psychological theories are species specific, situation specific or sub area specific, so cannot be general theories. For example, conclusions reached by studying dogs might not be valid for cats and vice versa. Thus, theory in psychology is in a fragmented state. Each sub-area tends to have its own domain-specific theories and data. The discipline of psychology can sometimes feel like a medieval country split into fiefdoms by moats, walls and a haphazard set of paltry roads and rules and customs. One wonders if psychology really is a science why are there so many sub-areas, stretches of no man's land, and unrewarding activities? Now, I freely confess that my caricature of psychology is a bit exaggerated, but it is based on a kernel of truth. A science without a general theory is like a dog without a bow. Commentators agree a major redesign of the discipline is long overdue. Roads and bridges need to be built. It's an Isambard Brunel the science needs as much as another Charles Darwin. In embracing intentionality, purpose and desire, the general theory is non-reductive, while at the same time drawing on principles from other sciences, in particular biology and physiology. My theory applies to all sub-areas, situations, species, ages, stages, genders and cultures. The only proviso is that the organism must have consciousness. The theory consists of 20 principles and 80 propositions in total. 100 empirically falsifiable propositions. These propositions make the general theory transparent and capable of falsification. Organisms are adapted to each other and the environment because there is an inbuilt striving towards stability and equilibria. We call this the behavioral homeostasis or homeostasis type two. Identifying and defining this second type of homeostasis has profound implications for our understanding of motivation and behaviour. In building roads and bridges, one must neither over nor under design. Nobody really knows how sturdy the structures are until they are tested with a fleet of trucks. It is the normal fate of theories to be replaced by better theories. However long it takes, our broken discipline needs to be put together into one beautiful whole. This is one small step in that direction.